All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to IBM Developer Online Meetup. This is our eighth and final webinar with uh, Hair Technologies in the IBM Developer Series. And as you can see on the screen today, today happens to be a Tuesday, so we'll talk all about location. Um, I, my name is Okar. I'm a developer advocate at IBM. I'll be your host for today. Uh, thank you for joining us again. As usual, we have Vedan and Mohammed from Hair Technologies. Hello, hello. And then we have hello. also have hi. Uh, we also have Masa on the call today, who is an uh, who is a developer advocate at IBM. Hello, Masa. Hello, everyone. So today we are talking about Node-RED, which is super exciting. I use Node-RED a lot, um, and I use it especially at hackathons. I think it's a perfect tool for uh, writing quick solutions, writing quick code prototypes. So I'm super excited to see what you have to show show us today. Um, and for everybody else, this webinar is being recorded. The replay will be available on the same URL you're watching the webinar uh, at. Uh, we'll also post a link on our Meetup page, um, as well as I'll send out an email with all of the resources that uh, will be provided to you today, uh, as well as the presentation. If you want to get notified of future events, IBM events on Crowdcast, you can uh, follow us. If you look at the top of the screen, there is an IBM developer icon, and right next to it is a follow button. So if you click on that, you'll get notified of our, uh, every time we do an event. Um, for those of you who are new to IBM Developer, we are a team of developer advocates across the world, and we primarily do developer education events like this one with our partners, um, as well as we uh, do workshops and hackathons. A couple of guidelines for the event today. So feel free to use the chat functionality. I see a lot of you are saying uh, hello to each other, which is always good to see. Uh, there's also a uh, ask a question button. So you can use that to ask uh, questions relevant to the, the content in the webinar today. Um, there's a polling feature in Crowdcast, which is very useful. So we'll be sending out, or I will be sending out polls uh, every now and then. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, and finally, there is a survey button at the bottom of the screen. So uh, the team here, you know, IBM team, hair technology team, we try our best to give you content that hopefully is useful, but at the same time, we want to know what else you want to learn. We want to know if we can improve on certain things. So, so please do answer the survey during the event or after the event, and uh, that, that's always, any feedback is always very useful to us. All right, with all of that being said, uh, Mohamed, I'll hand it over to you to start to kick off the actual event. Thank you very much. Uh, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you are, uh, we have people from India, from Mexico, from UAE, from Dubai, from Cairo, from a lot of places. So uh, be ready for uh, another session on Tuesday. So it's it's all about location. Uh, so today we'll talk about the Node-RED. I, I think if you are not familiar with the Node-RED, uh, it's really a nice tool. But before this, let me introduce the team, like, faces to the names. So we have Masa. She's the cloud developer advocate from IBM. She will guide us today with the Node-RED technology in top of the IBM cloud and how we can use this uh, nice tool. We have Vidhan, our senior developer evangelist. He's our expert on the location technologies, on the services, APIs, and mobile SDK for whole technology and myself. So simply, we have always the, the topic of the, the new technologies. On, on the past eight sessions, we, we are there to introduce a lot of technologies related to location and how to enable the location intelligence along with, with the IBM platform full stack, yeah? be it an IoT, be it Watson, AI, blockchain, and the rest. So if I need to put the, the IoT in, uh, on the top of the discussion, it's very, uh, very known that the whole IoT solutions become very complex. A lot of people trying to have a lot of tools as well and platform to use it to develop this type of uh, IoT solutions. But having said that, we have always, always the challenge of we need to have a simple tool with a list code as much as we can. So we have a, a fast way to deploy. Yet we need to have more functions and more capabilities on that tool. So whenever we have an IoT and AI solution that's connected, there is a lot of things that you need to do. And that's the tool, ID. So it is it, it gives you this type of uh, magic 
a wound, if I need to name it like this, that bridge the gap between the hardware, between the software, and the business solutions and the applications that you are looking for. So this is like a quick snapshot if we need to know what's happening right now. So we have the Python, we have the C++, the C Sharp, and, and the rest. It's a lot of code, yet a lot of functionality. It's very cool. And in the other area, if we need to have less code, but way less functionality, that there is a lot of open source and even like friendly uh, tool like the IFTT, for example. However, today we are talking about something in between, something really useful yet functional, which is the node rent. So if I need to get Masa, uh, can you give us more insights about the node rent? Yeah, sure. So Node-RED is a visual programming tool that you can use to connect your APIs and your IoT applications together. And it's really useful because you can build applications really quickly. You can embed your um, like Node-RED projects uh, in your applications. You don't have to mm -hmm. build full projects um, with Node-RED. You can just add them to your projects. And you can also, like, you don't, you only need minimal like lines of codes, if you if you want to code, you don't you don't really always have to code, and um, Node-RED consists of like you can see three components, uh, which are the nodes, the flow, and the message. Mm -hmm. So the node is the smallest uh, block in uh, in the palette in uh, in the flow, and uh, it's it's like um, it contains uh, like. Uh, when you connect them together you create a flow and the message nice. uh sends you like it gives you the output of this flow and you and we will show you in a bit if you go to the next slide yeah so non-red is an open source ideally so it is it's functioning in a lot of platforms as well and working with uh with ibm cloud right yes exactly you can deploy it on anywhere so if you take a look here at uh, the user interface of Node-RED, you can notice to the left is where uh, you have your nodes. Um, mm -hmm. you, you, can, you can have so many default nodes. If uh, you want some custom nodes, you can install them. You can also create your own nodes. And then uh, on the flow tab, this is where uh, you build your application. You connect it to you connect the APIs together, and then to the left uh, is where you can view information about the nodes, and you mm -hmm. can also debug it and view information. There is also the hamburger menu. This is where you can do much more, like install nodes, uh, install flows, and import them, and uh, so on. So uh, you can also use Node-RED. If we go to the next slide, um, we can see. Oh yeah, this one. So you can notice so there's here a lot that, of examples, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you can notice here the different types of uh, nodes we can use. For example, the inject node is an input node where you can uh, input any type of um, like input to your node. So you can just start a flow, and uh, you, it can be any type, not necessarily uh, like it doesn't necessarily to be manually. You can also have uh, like an HTTP input uh, as a like uh, to create you know a web page and that that can be like the source of your input for example uh, you can also have the function node the function node mm -hmm. can be useful to return messages to like if you want to write your own message uh, I mean your own code in JavaScript the debug mm -hmm. node is is very helpful when you want to uh, make sure that your flow is going correctly and we will see that during the hands-on um, there is the http request this node you can use it uh, for like any kind of um, api you would like to use you just add the url the parameters and you're ready to go uh, you can also use it with uh, ibm watson technologies like watson assistant watson discovery you can build a speech to text text-to-speech uh, uh, like virtual assistants really quick with uh, uh, Node-RED. So a lot of capabilities and functionality, if I, if I, may, I may say, and, and it's super easy, right? Yeah, indeed. Awesome. Uh, so 
where I need to find the node red? Yeah, um, node red, you can install it locally uh, on your machine. Uh, you can also run it on a device like Raspberry Pi, or you can even run it on the cloud using uh, Cloud Foundry or even uh, on Kubernetes and OpenShift. Yeah, oh, cool. Okay. So today, today we'll have part of the hands-on this type of experience of Nodred, and ideally we'll have uh, a bit of experience of connecting the social uh, feeds from Twitter, right? and show this into the mapping areas as well and using the location intelligence. Can you tell us more? Um, yeah, that's it. That's about it. Uh, our use case here. Um, so we're going to have um, like a web a user interface that shows a world mm -hmm. map and uh, it will be uh, connected from Nodred and uh, that will be connected to, to Twitter API and we're mm -hmm. going to use the here technologies uh, geolocation uh, to search um, for the locations in order to map them uh, on our map uh, on Nodred. Nice, cool. So and how, how it will look? How it will look like? Yeah, so yeah. the flow will look similar to this. It's very simple uh, flow. If you feel like it's complicated, don't worry about it. Um, it's very simple flow, and we'll explain uh, the details uh, during the hands-on. So you will show us the, the screens, right? Yeah. Yeah, OK, awesome. So I'll stop sharing, and please jump in. Sure. OK. So uh, first of all, OK, everyone can see my screen. I would like first to yes. show you um, this is the this is going to be the final look. You can see the markers on the map. Uh, when you click on them, you will notice that uh, it has the name of uh, username and the tweet longitude and latitude. We can uh, connect uh, like we can customize these based on our preferences. Of course, I'm like just searching for Fall Guys because it's a famous game uh, lately, and uh, you know it will be interesting to see how uh, like many people are talking about it throughout the world. Uh, you can notice that like how the number of tweets, for example, here in the U.S. is very uh, so many tweets in in that area. You can also notice uh, all around Europe, in the Middle East, and so on, and. This is just a simple use case, but it can be very helpful because it can be useful for the data science projects, for example, or even if you want to just embed a simple uh, map that shows these kind of tweets uh, uh, in your application. Um, this this is uh, just uh, really cool to see live updates from Twitter. As we all know, Twitter has the latest news coming right up from there. So. First of all, um, we can we have this uh, GitHub repository. Uh, I will share it in the chat. So this is uh, it has all of the resources you will need. You can deploy a Node-RED application on uh, Cloud Foundry uh, or locally or even on OpenShift. So I have provided you with the guidelines on how you can create the Node-RED application, um, and then later on we will import the flow. Uh, keep in mind that you will need to have here developer account. You will also need to have IBM Cloud account and access to Twitter API by applying to the Twitter developer account. In case if you don't have um, access to Twitter uh, developer account by right now, it's all right. Um, it will take a few days, but since uh, you have the resources here for the GitHub repository and um, you know, the recording is already being, uh, I mean, the webinar is being recorded, so don't worry about that. Uh, you can feel free to just uh, go back to, to the, like, uh, to the workshop whenever you want. And we'd, all, we'd like also to um, install uh, the, these nodes, which is the world map uh, node and the Twitter stream node. Uh, the cool thing about it is, um, like, you have this full library of nodes, flows, and collections that you can install uh, to your Node-RED project. 
and uh, simply by just uh, adding it uh, from uh, the Node-RED user interface. And you can find so many information. We're going to use the world map, which is going to be the output node uh, to view the map. And uh, for the Twitter, um, okay, I, I, I left my GitHub repository. And so for the Twitter uh, stream node, uh, we'll be using this one. We'll also show you how it looks like in, inside the um, in, inside the flow. You can search for like so many resources you will find related to nodes, flows, and collections related to Twitter. And you can see, um, like for example, um, extract entities node. You can see search for nodes. Uh, I mean, search tweets, favorite tweets, and so on. So let's before let's get started now. Um, for a starter, uh, we want to import um, our uh, flow, which is this one. Okay, you can easily uh, import it by going to the JSON file and then copying it. And then you would go to uh, the hamburger menu and then click on import from clipboard and paste it. So here you go. So if uh, in case like some of you might uh, notice that they might have uh, green, gray boxes uh, around this one and around this one, that's because you will have to install them. You can install uh, nodes from, uh, was it from Manage Palette? This is where you can check out like what kind of node libraries you have and install them and so on. So in our case, we can just search for the Twitter stream, and this is the one, Node Red Contribute Twitter Stream. And I have it already installed. Same thing for the world map. And yeah, I've already installed it. Um, it will be like real quick to install it. So no worries about that. Now, um, Let's get started uh, with the first, like let's go through the whole flow. Uh, we're starting with the Twitter stream node. The Twitter stream nodes, if you double click on it, you will notice that you will have to create a new API connection. For example, if you have just created, uh, you just have imported the flow. And uh, from a Twitter, you can go to uh, get the API and secret keys. And you also need to, to generate access tokens and uh, uh, access secret. And then you will just have to add them. Um, I can add them here. And of course, don't show your API keys in front of anyone. So Masa, uh, if, yeah? if you can zoom a bit and move slowly so because the screen is start to be blurry first and then oh yeah so, okay i'm yeah, sorry about that. that no okay. but don't move that fast just like <laughs> uh, step by step sure sure thank you so much for letting thank me you. know okay so as you can see you just import your keys and tokens and uh, save it and you're done of course uh this is where you search for Twitter topic, for, for example, I have searched for Fall Guys. Uh, you can search for any kind of uh, recent topic that you're interested to take a look at. And then you can see how many tweets per minute, for example, and if you want, like there's no limit and so on. If you want to have like only verified, and this can be useful in case if you're just looking for some, let's say authentic uh, news, Read if you want, if you're looking for retweets or if you want to log media and uh, so on. So let's debug this node actually um, and see uh, what it looks like. And what, let's see what uh, the messages we're receiving from this one. First, we have to deploy it. And then there's like bug like, uh, wait, I have to, yeah. So you can notice, let me see. Okay, it's scrolling really, scrolling down really quick. Okay, wait, I will have to create a new one and show it to you because there's so many nodes here. 
and showing me messages from other nodes. Okay. Let me see if I have my Twitter APIs connected. Okay, it should be showing it. I'm sorry about that. Um, So you might want to filter this this node, right? Yeah. Instead of all nodes, simply. No, I think it might be the issue that I'm having the same flow here. Okay, no worries. Yeah, simply on the yeah. There you your go. Delete button. Yeah. So here is you. You, you will be receiving sometimes so many messages uh, if you're having so many debug nodes, but uh, this is. Um, like how the object of tweet, the tweets on Twitter, you can see it has information about what time it was created, the tweet ID, the text, for example, and the source for it. Uh, if you want to view the user information, like user ID, their name, and their screen name means username, and then their location. Of course, some of them are just like not legit uh, locations, but it's fine. Um, there is also, if there are any embedded uh, videos or URLs, they can be shown. And if there is a geo, if like someone has added their location to the tweet, it will be shown here, for example. But usually we're going to use in this uh, project, uh, was it uh, like the location of the profile. And it also can show you the language of the tweet. Now, uh, so we're going to pick like only few of these uh, like elements in that object uh, we're going to use the change uh, node where we're going to set the variables in uh, in that uh, come out uh, from twitter stream node that we want to pass in, in the next flow and uh, as you can see um we're going to set message.txt uh, which is going to be equal to payload.txt, message.payload.txt. We're going to show you in a bit how it looks like. Uh, we're going to also, mes uh, also um, message.query is going to be equal to message.payload.user.query and the username, message.username is going to be equal to message.payload.username, I mean .user.screenName. Um, and we're going to also add the here API key. Uh, it's much safer to set it that way, like in, in not inside the HTTP request, because if someone else is going to import it, import your flow, uh, this value will not be available for them. So we're going to set flow .here API key, and we're going to save it to a string, or which is our API key. And then um, we're going to save it into message.here.api key. Um, and yeah, we can also check the output of this one. And you can notice the changes. OK, let's see. It will take some time till it changes, yeah. Okay, master. Do one thing. Uh, change under debug from all node to current flow. So. Oh yeah, yeah. This one it should be message only. All message. Uh, apologies. Okay. Message. <laughs> complete message object. My bad. Yeah. Okay. So it should just take some time till it shows us the messages. So it is still connecting, right? The Twitter stream. Yeah, it takes some time, so that's why uh, it would just show some errors. So uh, I like this a lot. Basically, I don't have to write a lot of code. I simply have to drag and drop a few of the things, and then there I have to pass the values, like the API key and the OAuth token and all those things. And so that makes life of a developer very easy, actually. I like that part. Yeah. OK, let's see. Let's debug it again. Okay. 
So as you can see, here's uh, the query can be null sometimes. Um, and that's because uh, some users don't have their locations available. The username uh, is set also as in the object. Uh, also the text, we're saving it and we're also saving the API key. And then we're passing to um, the geocoding API by here technologies in, uh, in the HTTP request, which is here. It's going to be a get method. We're uh, adding the, uh, the link for the API key, I mean, I mean for the API call. And as you can see that we have uh, the curly brackets here, uh, they have to be like triple curly brackets around each uh, variable. Uh, and the query refers to message.query and API key is going to be the same thing. Here API key refers to message.here API key. The variables will have to be inside the triple curly brackets in order for them to be um, like for us to know their value. And then uh, later on, we're just uh, like, we're just, uh, you know, converting it, the results into an object, uh, in an interjection object. We can also debug that if you want, and we'll show us the results of um, like the whole message object, including what we previously saved in addition, in addition to the new uh, longitude and latitude that we extracted from the HTTP request with the uh, Hair Technologies API. And it will take some time after we deploy it uh, to make you know the request. So uh, it reconnects, right? Every time we hit a, a deploy button, the Twitter stream, uh, the component, the node, it reconnects with the Twitter server, I think, right? Yeah, and that's why it takes time. Can you can you move to the left so that uh, we can see uh, the Twitter stream? Sure. Yeah, now it's connected. Okay, so let's see, it's taking. Okay, oh. I'm just trying to look for the results. Okay, so anyways, after we uh, get these um, like results from the HTTP request, we're going to save them uh, like, uh, yeah, so we're going, the reason it is, it is inside the me message.payload.items, then the position zero. Of course, uh, when you try to extract um, like the longitude and latitude, for example, for a city, it will show you different positions and it will be in an array of different items. So items of zero, items of, zero, items of one, and so on. So it will be different uh, results. Uh, for this use case, I just went with the first result, which is items of zero. And then I saved uh, message.longitude uh, and saved that value into message.longitude and message.latitude. And then... Um, yeah. This passing is quite easy here. That is what I liked a lot that in JSON uh, node that you have, right? Uh, we can easily pass the JSON data and take out what value we want exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so let's see now in the next, in the next part of the flow, um, we have, this is where we save it, all, like save all of our results in a JSON object. So because we want all of these, we want the username, we want the latitude, longitude, and the tweet, because that's what we want. But say you want more than that, uh, you can just save these features, like let's say time, and you can add it the same way uh, we added them here. Uh, for us, we also added an icon, which is Twitter square, um, because we wanted to like emphasize on the tweets. You can also customize the icons in this map. And we can, I think we can see results of it here. Okay, so uh, let's see if it's going to, do some, to give us some results.
so as you can see, it's showing us um, in the payload object, the name, the icon, latitude, longitude, tweet, message ID, the query, which is the uh, location and the username and the text, which is our tweet. And these are what I wanted to view in the map. And uh, because we wanted to like every few seconds to set it to show to us, like to view the tweets. So we're going to use the timestamp inject node and we're going to uh, set it every six seconds. I felt that it's a suitable uh, period of time, six seconds, not too fast, not too slow to view the nodes. And I think if we go here, yeah, you can see, I just left that map um, like open. Um, I didn't reload it and it can show you like, um, if you did, if you don't reload it, it will just show you uh, how many tweets like so far have been posted. This is actually happening right now. I didn't view the time and so on, um, but yeah, we can try that as well. Um, so Basically, yeah, sure. you pass the data that you got from the Twitter API, right? You take out, uh, you took out the query and the, uh, the location, and then you pass that location, the, the name or the string to the geocoding and search API of you. And from there, you got the latitude longitude, right? And yes, then exactly. the whole thing, you pass it on to the world map node that we have, right? Yeah. Okay. And um, so in this section here, we're just adding a command. Uh, so, you know, it just show us the, um, was it the, the icons on the map. And then the last node, which is the output node, the world map, uh, which is the one you just saw, you can also customize it. For me, for example, I have, I, I added the, you should add the longitude and latitude where you want it to focus on when you first open the map. Uh, I just wanted to show like a general view of the world map. Uh, so, but you can zoom in, zoom out also using uh, this, this feature. Uh, three means like it's a little bit further. The bigger the number does, like it will just keep on zooming. You can also pick uh, like whatever interface of the map you would like. For example, if I pick the National Geographic map, and let's say I want to increase this, increase the zoom the size of the map i mean yeah so if we just refresh it yeah you'll see the the map has changed it's different now and even this the zoom is different if you if you reload again you will notice that it is much bigger and yeah so this is the whole flow to recap uh, I'll just go through the whole flow all over again, just real quick. So we started with a Twitter stream. Uh, we extracted uh, the user information and the tweet information that we want to view on our map. And uh, they were the username, the tweet, uh, the location. And then we processed the location and connected it to Here Technologies uh, Geocoding API. And then uh, we took the, the, long, the output, which is the longitude and latitude, and then we just process them together, all of them, uh, put them in one JSON object for each tweet, and we viewed it on the map. And yeah, that's it for uh, today's hands-on. Um, I think if there are any much more, I can explain about Nodred, for example. Uh, yeah, I'm done. Um, I will just uh, hand over to you, Bidhan. I think you will yeah. need to, how to improve this. Uh... Yeah, uh, so you have almost explained everything. Actually, you have explained everything. So, uh, hello everyone, I'm Vidhan and I'm evangelist with Here Technologies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain a few of the parts, right? And how you can quickly create a map, right? Or, embedder here map in this application. Let me know if you are able to see my screen. Is my screen visible, everyone? Yes. Thank you. So uh, this is a part which is the actual flow which Masa has explained, right? And here is where here technologies is coming into the picture and this link which we are using 
I'm just going to show you. This is the link which we are using. This is what we call an API, right? That is your a normal HTTP request where you pass the query and the API key. And I already have an API key. I kept it with me. I'm just going to show you how is the structure and how uh, we are actually uh, taking out the values, right? So I have already prepared this while we were talking. So this is how it looks like when you pass the query in Postman, if you search for say Dubai. So what it does is uh, it gives you a whole set of information, right? And uh, this is JSON response, okay? By default, it gives you a JSON response. You can convert it into, you can ask for the XML also. Okay, and what we are doing in this uh, is basically we are passing or we are taking the query from the Twitter API, right? We are taking, we are extracting the location and then we are appending it through this request, which Masa has created. And after that, we are simply passing it. We are calling uh, the API and in the response, we are getting this structure. And from this structure, what we are doing is we are taking out this position, latitude and longitude. And that is what we are passing further. So if you want to try it, I'm going to share the link and you can simply run it in your browser. In that way, you can also try it with me. So uh, let me open the link. You can simply run it in Chrome or Mozilla. I'll suggest Mozilla because Mozilla will make it look beautiful and readable. Now, uh, this is what is happening here. Let's say that if you want to quickly create a map, right? and you want to create a map uh, where you don't want to involve the node, as in like the world map node, which is already there. What you can do is you can do something like this. This is one of the quickest way of creating a map. You get a, uh, this node, right? The HTTP in node, and you define um, how do you want to, uh, which method you want to use. So we're using get method. And after that, which URL you want to append to it. So it's up to you, whichever URL you want to append, you can do that. And after that, you simply create a function node. And in this function node, what we are doing is we are simply passing the uh, complete HTML code with CSS and JavaScript. Okay, so it contains all the libraries, mapping libraries of here. And then we have script part. Okay, I'm going to ignore this uh, error, although it's not uh, hampering my code, but it's there. <laughs> okay, and after that, a simple JavaScript code which takes a certain location. Right? I'm not sure which location is this. And then we are simply plotting it on a map and with a certain zoom level, a certain location. And then we are asking for, or we are creating certain features, right? Like uh, this part is going to help you out in basically having the uh, zoom in, zoom out feature and the changing the layers from earth to satellite and different layers. And this part is where we are adding to simply have the drag feature. And then we are adding a default marker, right? A marker, simple marker. And this is a default marker that you're gonna see on the location that we have hard coded. At the bottom, we are simply adding an info bubble. So whenever you're gonna click on that marker, it's going to pop up something like anything that you want to. Let's say that it's Twitter. And simply you are clicking on turn, I'm clicking on deploy. And let's see, okay, I think I have created this here. So this is a simple map that you are creating, right? And you can include a map quickly like this, and you have zoom in, zoom out feature. You can change the layer, right? Map view, your default view or daylight view to a satellite view. And you can see the traffic condition and all those things. Okay, I'm gonna keep it as map view. And then if you click on this info bubble, you'll see the information, right? So this is one of the quickest and easiest way of getting started when it comes to map. Now, there are a lot of things that you can do here, actually. The things like uh, we have shown only what, uh, showing the icons on a the map. There are a lot of things that you, you can include. Things like you can have routing. Uh, routing is basically taking you from one place to another. You can uh, make use of routing. Right, that is uh, routing is taking you from one place to another, from point A to point B, whether you are walking or you're going by your own car or you're taking a public transit. So you can define that and you can build a complete solution out of it, right? Okay, and apart from that, you want to show the route or you want to draw that route on a map, like a line, 
you can do that apart from that another thing that we uh, we can use heavily for creating a map is what we call interactive map or map image right that is basically our map maps api okay and uh, here you can go for the option for javascript that we saw just now or you can go for uh, our mobile based software development kit right for android ios or you want to go for hybrid and we have for flutter if i scroll down this is the part that we have used for converting a string of a place name into a latitude longitude and then we pass that lat long to our uh, node which is world map and then we are plotting it with the help of world map node and yeah these are the things that you can basically use when it comes to uh, maneuvering around the map and if you have other features like you want to apply the same thing but with commercial vehicles you can go with fleet telematics right okay and uh, one thing that you want to do is simply grab the api key and you can use this api key anywhere right okay so i grabbed my api key from the developer portal i simply created a free mail account and when you go to the developer portal you will be seeing a project page when you click on this it will take you to the credential page and from here you can grab the api key i can show you right and if or if you think that okay somebody can misuse it you can simply disable it or delete it and you can create in freemium you can generate two api keys right so these are things that you can do apart from that you can do a lot of different things uh, let's say that you want to download the structure right what you can do is you can simply have a node right uh, let me see if we have it here and that node does what you can simply download the structure as json or csv or plain text right uh, so i did that previously and i got something like this i converted or got all the data on my system like this let me see if i have it open yeah so these are the two uh, json file i created and if you think that okay i don't want to show it on the node read only then what you can do is you can pass it on or you can create it on IBM Cloud, this JSON link, and then you can simply call this JSON link and you can pass the data and you can do it in a live way on a client machine itself, right? So these are things that you can try and you can do with this. Yeah, apart from that. Okay, so um, let, me, let me try it. Okay, so uh, this is the data that we are getting for this. So if you, if you look at this again, right? So here we uh, have the response, right? Okay, this is where we are making the API call. And then here we are converting it into, uh, you can see that JSON. And then we have a rule set, which is basically passing the data and taking out only latitude and longitude, right? Because we only want let what latitude and longitude and that is what we want to be plotting on the map and then we are passing it further and that is how we are working on this okay i think uh, that will be all from my end and if you have any queries guys you can ask me let me stop sharing my screen so thank you very much so any question from the audience so we do, uh, this is Sobkar here, we do have two questions in the ask a question panel. Um, I don't know if you want me to read it out or, or uh, Mohammed, do you want to take a look? Yeah, sure. So if there is any JavaScript library for clustering markers on, on the heat libraries. Yeah, so if you want to create a bunch of markers, right? And yeah, we do have, let me, let me uh, take out that link and share with you. Meanwhile, we can take the second query, right? Yeah, so the second question actually it's for IBM. So is it possible for Watson Assistant to pick up the due locations? So uh, I, th yes. I think we, yeah. Yes, it is possible. Uh, we can like, um, you can just embed like a map into Watson Assistant. And um, like, if you want to integrate like uh, the geolocation, uh, asking for a specific location, you can just pass it through the APIs and then extract the longitude and latitude and then just simply embed uh, the world map for example just like the one i viewed uh, you can simply embed it into like any 
iframe or uh, into your HTML pages. And you can add HTML tags in Watson Assistant. Awesome. Uh, I'm just sharing the link for the second webinar. So we have it as Watson Assistant and Location. It was part of a Code for Code. Uh, code, for code. So please, if you have a chance, you can go through it. Uh, how I can interact with the map on map to drop additional markers, zoom to the location by sending node red messages to the here map. Okay. So, hand. Yeah. So John, what you can do is, so we have uh, an, uh, you can say that call to event, right? Where uh, you can simply activate the event. And when you click on the map, see if you want to do it physically by clicking it, then simply you can call that event to tap in a way, and then you can drop a marker there. And uh, regarding zoom to the location by sending node rate messages to the here map, uh, that is something that we were trying, right? And uh, I'll share that with you once we are done with that. Right? We are facing some issue there. Although that is cool. that can be done, but we had some time constraints. Mm -hmm. So I think that the limitation, uh, th there is no limitation as such in the end of the day, it's technology and there is some sort of integratability between IBM cloud technologies as and here as well from location perspective. So we, we can manage to handle this type of request here and there. I think Vidhan and, and IBM team are working on some examples, some GitHub repo to then demonstrate this type of capabilities. I think one repository is going to be good for this. Uh, yeah. That's visual recognition where we are involving IBM Watson and location. So that might be helpful. Awesome. Uh, so yes, one sure. more question. That would be yeah. fun actually. Please yeah, see. it is. One more question is there is a sample GitHub reference for VA geolocation integration? Um, I'll have to check. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, VA geolocation integration. Okay, I'm going to ping you. Uh, let me let me check. Okay. Meanwhile, I can check. Okay. Cool. Video is not available. Yeah. So. Yeah, so no, sorry, Bob, go no, ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, it should be. <laughs> no, I was just, I was, yeah, I was just commenting that nobody was sharing anything, George, so it should be, you should see some something on the screen now. Yes, we are sharing the screen in the videos as well. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so let me, let me continue. What's, what's next? So during the, the last uh, seven sessions and now the eighth, we tried actually to answer this type of questions. It is about location-centric uh, applications and solutions, which is where and how and when this type of questions, uh, it's really hard with the industry these days with all the situation that we have, even with the COVID uh, activities. So today it's the eighth session out of the series. It is the end of the series at this point of time Potentially, we, we can meet you again with, with the Location Tuesdays activities. Please, if you have any questions, we are here to, to help. The recording is already available, and also our information will be available. So small things that I need to share.
Thank you very much for your time. I think we uh, we really enjoyed the, the eight sessions with, with IBM team. Personally, I... So, yeah, Abkar. Uh... Great, thank you, Mohammed. Um, so I, I think we have answered, or you all have answered all of the questions. Um, that's great. Uh, again, I'll send out an email with all the resources that were shared during this event, as well as the previous recording. So I know somebody asked if uh, if there's one place where they can watch all of the recordings. So Vidan, that's a good idea. Just change the number in the URL. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. But uh, but to make it even more simpler, I'll uh, I'll, I'll include everything in the email. Um, cool. So let's. Let's see this. Uh, I don't think we have any more questions. John, thank you again for taking part and giving us uh, uh, the reference to your GitHub account with all of the repositories you have created. Um, and with that, I, Vidan, do you have anything to add? Yeah, so uh, Rangana had asked a query regarding VA. I just want to know what VA is from her perspective, VA geolocation. If uh, it can be elaborated, then I can be of some help. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's a good point. So yes, please clarify if you can. Um, I'm not sh oh, okay, oh, Watson you. Assistant. Uh, so I had shared a link in the chat uh, uh, where uh, we are working with uh, Watson Assistant. Or if you, if you go, Rangana, if you go to the first and second and third uh, uh, session that we had with uh, IBM on Crowdcast, you'll find a lot of resources where you can simply uh, link with Watson Assistant. And we had created a COVID related application where we were involving location and Watson Assistant chat and all those things. So that would be a good uh, links to start with. Perfect. And and they'll be included in the email as well, uh, Rangana. So if you, uh, once you get that, please take a look. Um, all right, well, I'm kind of sad. This is the last event we're doing in this, in this series. Uh, and this was a lot of fun. Thank you, Vadan, Mohammed, working with the IBM Thank team you. here. Um, and we look forward to hosting you another time for another wonderful series. Sure. Thank you very much. All right. And Masa, thank you as well. Uh, this was a great webinar, and I got to learn a lot more about Node-RED than I knew before. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.